This podcast is aimed at the veteran community. It hopes to recreate a conversation taking place in any NAFI anywhere in the world right now. We want to combat social isolation by letting veterans feel part of this conversation. If you're easily offended, please switch off now. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to this channel and be part of the community. Hello everyone and welcome to Veterans in Crisis podcast. Um, today we have Tom Sloans. Um, Tom isn't a veteran. I've asked Tom along because he's done a real lot for Veterans in Crisis. Uh, he's donated quite a bit of money through um, BetDag, who were shirt sponsors from Sunland. He's uh, put a Niall Quinn talk in on for us. He's done a penalty shootout down at uh, Charlton. Um, and uh, he's just been made exec- non-executive director for Sunland AFC. So, welcome, Tom. Thanks, George. Great to be here. It's um, and it's great to have a look around the building. I've been that busy in the last sort of six months. I didn't get here for the opening, etc. But uh, looked around. It's absolutely fantastic. And, uh, it's uh, good, isn't it? It's nice to see you with your veterans in crisis gear on, which you've, which I've got as well, <laughs> by the way. But um, it, uh, I haven't given much of an outing yet. But that's going to change soon. Well, you tortured us about because I gave you a Mickey <laughs> one before dinner, and absolutely. you thought when you oh, that's another thing. I mean, we'll get onto this later, but. When when you we played football on the on the stadium, didn't we? On the oh, pitch. I forgot about that. And yeah, you yeah, and yeah. you and you thought, ah, yeah, I'm giving me my top, and I added it straight away. No, no, you no, wounded, were not you? I was very impressed. I was I was wounded playing on the stadium of light, and I can't remember much what you did that night. No, um, about ten minutes, mate. Aye. About ten minutes. Well, in fact, the f- the game I played with you, I played half an hour, and my boots splitting off, and then I played a game for Vicks. Uh, for Genesis Protection Services, aye, and, two and I, I, two fucking, or something, I, I injured my leg in aye. the warm-up, aye. so I was on for ten minutes. It's a great experience. So I mean, like, you know, talking about, um, and I'm sure we'll get to it. And that, like, I was fortunate. Now I've played on Roker Park and I played on the Stadium of Lightning, and I just wonder because, like, you know, talking about we're football fans, both of us mad passionate about Sunderland, and we're having a bit stroll about there. And then when you put thirty thousand people there. And they're all shouting mm. good or bad things. It makes a big difference, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man. I yeah. mean, I was surprised playing on the pitch how big oh, the pitch was. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah. I mean, I haven't played football for years. That's it's why probably because you're not fit like... Uh, like no, nah, yeah. <laughs> me boots... <laughs> neither one of my boots flitting off because I years for 15 years. Oh, <laughs> uh, and they were dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, you're Sunderland lad. Yep. Uh, where did you grow up? Born and bred in uh, Bright Street in, in Roker. All right. Uh, so not too far from here, about 250 yards from uh, Roker Park. So that's where I grew up there. Um, uh, my dad in the shipyards, like most people down here in, in and around the pits, the shipyards. Um, we had an out. Um, still got an out. But like, <laughs> you but spent <laughs> most of it. <laughs> I'll give it I'll, we'll give it all to you. But, um, <laughs> but no, just like born and bred down there, you know, hard upbringing and things like that. But like, I mean, I'm just that's where the passion for football comes from. I think, like, I mean, when I woke up, I was sort of six and seven, and I would go out and look out the window, and you've got this, you've got like all these people going down to Roker Park, and then you could see them floodlights and mm. the noise. It was just like, so it would be pretty impossible not to be a football fan born in Roker Avenue, right. you know. So yeah. that's where the early days were. Yeah. Down what there. school did you go to then? Um, well, early, early sort of mo- moving into, uh, and we moved up to Hilton Castle. We went posh. You know, oh, like which was good. In the, in the new builds. New builds. I four uh, four bedroom house. I think we had there, and um, and yeah, I went up to a school called Woodside, which is now gone. But I spent my comprehensive years at Castle View. Oh, yeah. But it um, it didn't. I mean, you know, not blow me on trumpet, but at the time, I was pretty warm playing football. You know, I mean, when I was like fourteen and fifteen, I was. I tried for Sunderland. Tried for England schoolboys. Could have signed for Sunderland, and. Um, was fantastic like and uh, like I said go, going back to it that's when I got the chance to play on Roker Park um, I remember playing against the lad not many people are normally like, but he's a they call the guy Terry Connor and he went on to have a really good career for Leeds and you're talking about uh, running Joe I ran about this lad for, for this lad for I think it was 70 minutes we used to play on this day. I think I touched the ball three times marking <laughs> him but like you know just a great experience and um, from there um you, get, you start to get the attraction of scouts. Uh, another one for people from Sunderland, um, God, uh, Charlie, um, I forgot his surname will come back to us in a second there. He was a big scout for Sunderland in the day and that, you know, and um, so you got, you know, like, you got the chance to go down there and have a look at the stadium and like meeting Jimmy Montgomery. I mean, I was 14, like, it was just, it was brilliant. Like, but again, you know, it starts like from the bottom, doesn't it? Like, you're born in Roker. 
you move about a bit around mm. Sunderland and things like that. You don't really forget where you come from. Well, I never have. No, like, you no, know? I'm a great believer. Of, I love Sunderland, so I, you uh, know, I like the community and everything. And for me, to, when I started Vix before the way it is now, uh, say six, seven years ago, when I, the idea, my idea all the time was to have a, a building in Roker. Aye. Because Roker was getting like quite a lot of shit for well, asylum seekers, like, yeah, exactly. you know, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. And, it, and it's a brilliant community. Mm-hmm. And it, if you didn't know about it, it got really bad press. Yeah. And I wanted to build something that the community could be part of, you know. Well, one of my me, me first houses I ever bought was in Ripon Street. Like, again, it's like 400 yards from right. here now. And I, yeah, I mean, I love it. And I mean, you're right on the coast, what's not to like. And um, I think, I don't know if that's common wherever you live, but like a lot of people like want to slag off what the, where they live. And like, I would never do it. I'm exactly, I listened to your podcast, one that you did the other night there. Right. And uh, me me and the missus, and after we'd wet ourselves listening to you <laughs> for the crack you had. But like, you're right. Like, um, and that's why, you know, laterally I'm getting involved at Sunderland. Why? Because like, I'm like you, I love it here. Mm. Like why, you know, I, I work a lot of my time in Dublin, London, and Gibraltar. I can't wait to get back home. Right. You know, and um, anyway, so it's that's... A great, it's a great city, mate. It is it's great. And the community, I mean, the community around here, the whole community of Sunderland have really taken the Vicks, that yeah. idea, they bought into it, bought the T-shirts, the, yeah. the, the, the well, donate it, stuff it, it all was the time. It was the... I, I have to say this, because we've, you know, I, like over the years... We've worked with lots of charities and things like that, and it was the. E- I'm not just saying it because you're sitting there, but it's the first time I've been able to do something. It was the easiest thing to ever get involved in because it was people in Sunderland mm. that was going to benefit, and like a lot of the stuff that we do is like London and bits and pieces like that, nationwide sort of things. When you get a chance to get involved with uh, something at Sunderland, it's it's just different. Uh, gravy. Well, I'm, I remember what I was. It was something like December the 20th, not the year just gone, the year before, so the 18. Um, I was driving, we were having our Christmas mail, I was taking the volunteers out for Christmas mail, and you phoned us when I was in my car. Mm-hmm. You were like, all right, my name's Tom, and I uh, work for Bet Dog, the shirt mm-hmm. sponsor. Mm-hmm. Do you want some money? I was like, yes, <laughs> well, please, uh, yes, sir. Uh, but I need to tell you where that came from, though, and again, you, uh, Brian King, right. um, just... Another, I know a lot of these lads, you know, I mean, the, the lads are like a bet, they like, the, like a drink, they like to go to the match. They're just like all of us, yeah. you know. So um, I, I, like, I know them, and I mean, I remember uh, it was actually Brian who put us and give us the details right. and things like that. And um, now just good lads, like you know, they've all got an opinion um, about football mm-hmm. as I do. And um, again, there were some of the lads that sponsored some of our charity events. I mean, he couldn't actually make it to come down to London, but um, they highlighted a kid uh, again, another lad who I played football for years, years and years ago. Uh, a lad called John again. After, sorry, I forgot his surname. But like, we took him all the way down to London to take a penalty in that penalty shootout. And I used to play football when I'm at school. So uh. like, it brings everything together, you know. Um, well, sorry, you guys bring are uh, bringing everything together. And I think, you know, it's like anything. The, you, you need greater exposure. Be delighted to help you try and achieve that mm. from a marketing point of view, because um, you can't have enough you people can't, looking you know. at what you're doing. You right. know? I mean, um, I'm. Before I started Vix the way it is two years ago now, I'd never been on social media. So right. I'd never been on Facebook, anything. Joe, the lad who's filming this, he saw it as a Facebook page. But I had to have a Facebook page to have a Vix one. Yeah. So then he, he fucking put me birthday at a different date. So people <laughs> came out wishing us happy birthday. And the last time was when we were going down to Wembley. So All people right. came texting us a happy birthday. Well, I time. mean, I knew somebody who did that and he kept changing this lad's birthday. So he got like about 15 birthdays every All year. Right. Everybody was going like, what's going on here? Like, you know, well, I didn't realise. And then the, the first year I didn't realise because I was really new. And, and then foolishly, I told people it wasn't my birthday. So even more people started wishing us happy All birthday. Right. And then the second year it happened... My friend from Australia, when I got out of bed in the morning to come to Wembley, he was like, oh, happy birthday. And I thought, he's fucking done it. Like, I know that's it's going to happen again because uh-huh. he must have thought it was my birthday yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh, so social media, I never had been involved in. It's sort of, it's really, really pushed Vix. Yep. It, it, it's been a really good like tool for me to use. Well, I've got mixed feelings about social media, to be honest with you, because I'm on it, I'm like yourself. Um, and again, like what you're doing, great. I love all that sort of stuff. So that's the real positive side. Um, I'm not sure that, um, and I'm, 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 I'm not, not going to have a go at like fans because everybody's got an opinion. Mm. I mean, I've got loads of opinions, John, and I don't hold back and telling people what they are. Would get them out today. Yeah, but like, no, but just like I just think, though, like I just think we've got to be careful, certainly with Twitter, 
and things like that. Um, people, the way people go on, like um, it's a lot of it's over the top in my opinion. It's very reactionary, very quick. And um, then people that they're having to go at, they've got families, kids, and, and issues just like we all have to deal with all mm. the time. And I, like I said, I think sometimes. Uh, bu- not bullying is the right word, but like it's just right, become it's a, a bit too bullying. open. It's, it's a being, type of bullying, isn't it? Yeah, you can do things and say things, and you're like, your like your identity isn't there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think it would be a lot different if your picture was up there. You know, well, not yours, like mm. it would be very nice to look at. But oh. like you get, <laughs> Cheers, you, <laughs> and you keep having birthdays. You're too expensive. <laughs> like, but you get the gist, don't you? Oh. What I'm saying is, used it the way you're using it is absolutely fantastic, and I love all of that sort of stuff. I love that. I don't think I like the um, the way people can just call people out and do and say things mm. without any factual. Well, it's funny you should say because I don't know if you picked on this, but uh, so do you know Ross Kemp? Yes, right. Yeah. So Ross Kemp, your mate Ross, I right. So he's a big kind of uh, sort of fan of the military charities. And yeah, stuff. seen that. So he also happens to be a Labour supporter, and he uh, came to Sunderland to support Julie Elliott. Mm-hmm. I'm friends with Julie Elliott's daughter, mm-hmm. right? I wasn't even in the ERV. He came up, she was telling him about it, so he says, oh, it would be all right to, to visit, right? So he mm-hmm. came here, visited, got his picture took with the clients and the staff who were here. Mm-hmm. The, then the clients and staff put it on social media, mm-hmm. and because he had a, <coughs> a labour rosette, fucking people went in a meltdown, right? So mm-hmm. from that happening, and I, I'm not really sure how they put all this together, but from A to D, mm-hmm. right, I was... Saving veterans to a terrorist sympathizer, right? Right, because Ross Kemp supported Julie Elliott. Mm-hmm. Julie Elliott's Labour, mm-hmm. Labour's leader was Jeremy Corbyn. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Corbyn likes fucking the <laughs> Irish, right? <laughs> so that ov- automatically meant that I was a terrorist sympathizer. It's however they didn't realize nobody knew why he came here mm-hmm. because I haven't told it hasn't been disclosed yet why mm-hmm. he came mm-hmm. and like he came to make a video about us buying this building. Mm-hmm to start our uh, fundraising campaign. Mm-hmm. At the time, I didn't tell anybody about that. So, but I let it run and run and run. And there was all kinds of opinions what people were saying about us and saying about Vix and how it's been a massive PR fuck up and stuff like that. And in the end, I say, well, you, you know. Well, I, I, well it, it's incredible. What I think is there, Jez, what you're saying is, it's incredible how we've got the time to think of all these things. Mm. I mean, I don't know about you, but I haven't got much time in the day. I haven't. And I would imagine in here, your hands on, like, it's not almost mm. a 24-7 thing. And um, most people I know or I work with and stuff like that are the same. So, like, I just don't know where these people get the time. Oh, yeah, I was, so, uh, it, it, that, that was kind of the, even like more or less the first kind of negative thing. So, mm. well, it was a good learning curve mm-hmm. because I always take the plaudits. So I, I'd sort of realise, well, I'm going to have to take the shit as well. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's it's fair the, point. You know, I'll just, uh, but it was weird how facts changed or they put things together to make a fact that wasn't true. Yeah, just make that, yeah, some nonsense. Yes, you aye, know, aye. I mean, so well, anyway, I was glad he came, you know. Aye. I'm not bothered who he supports. I didn't support anybody. Um, um, politically wise, mm-hmm. so, but I was glad he came, you know. And when it, when I released the video for the fundraising thing, other people will say why he came, mm-hmm. and he hasn't got a rosette on. He's got a fucking Vicks t-shirt on. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I'm happy, and I'm trying to get other people to do do it. Well, if he'd uh, if he'd come and had no gear on all together, you would have probably defended somebody else. Yeah, so well, like, the, you the, kind of win, really. the lasses downstairs well with the moon because <laughs> when he took his t- top off with a rosette, they never stopped talking about aye, it. Aye, you know, fit lad. Aye, aye, that's what they were saying. But I mean, even from that, he put me in touch with a bloke. Uh, who was high up in mm-hmm. Help for Heroes, mm-hmm. which opened doors with somebody else. And, you know, or anything that, that happened was good to me. Well, that's the biggest thing I've learned, like, uh, working away, uh, is is uh, build up a network, like what you're doing now, which is great. Like, build up a network of people. Because uh, there's some smashing people out there, like, they'll help you. You know what I mean? I've met in my, like, industry and things like that. I mean, I'm going to a big conference next week. These are a bit like, they become your mates very, very Aye. quickly. And people that, like... Um, you know, I mean, he, he, he spent some time with you the last time. I mean, Niall Quinn is a classic yeah. example, you know. And I mean, I know he's a gentleman and he'll do anything for you. But he's busy as well, like, mm. really busy, you know. And um, I remember when we brought him over here last time, it took him 25 minutes to get from the corner, sorry, from the uh, the shop, you know, where the club shop yeah. is, to the main entrance to do yeah. your interview. Oh, yeah, so no, was that no, many no. people. Oh, no, I was waiting. But I was going to sack him off. <laughs> but, but, like... This is these—they're the sort of high-profile people mm. 
that you need to network with to get sort of some sort of you know well I call it noise mm. and uh, and I think you've done great with that sort of thing. Oh, well, I'm like I'm it's a learning curve for us. I must mm. admit, it's, I'm learning every day how to do it, and you know I'm meeting sort of higher up people all the time. Mm-hmm. You know I've got well, like, like that. You've just said to me that I, like again, I didn't buy that higher up thing, right? Because mm. uh, everybody I've I've met lots of people in higher up positions, Ger, and they're, they're no different to me and you. you oh know? no, I and, don't. Uh, I've been quite surprised, yeah. like at how thick some of them are. To oh, be honest I, with I you. don't. I listen, you know? to me, nobody's better than me, and I'm Aye. not better than anybody else. You know, Aye. a higher up, I meant is higher profile. I know what you mean. Yeah, you know? yeah, fair point. I just like I said, I, I, sometimes again when I was younger, I, I was never not confident playing football. But when you're like going through your business career and things like that, you think you think you're the thickest person in the room. You know, sometimes, uh, and like, because people can talk really nice, and that definitely is my experience. Well, uh, my job, like, I've got a full time job as well as a research assistant for Northumbria Uni, and I'm the only person what they know of in the country that's got that job without a degree, right? right. So everyone in my Hard work, everyone in my office has got a, a PhD or doing a PhD, mm-hmm. right? Or and I've got my own office now, like, but when I was in that office, mm-hmm. uh, so I did actually feel the thickest. Mm-hmm. So I used to see it when someone would come in, I'd say, oh, I'm, I'm the only one who's got any qualifications, and mm-hmm. my boss would say, you're the only one. We've got loads of people with qualifications. You're the only person like you, you know. So aye, aye, the only person that's had, like had a life. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it because they spend all the time doing academic stuff, mm-hmm. and now I feel that fucking JCSE. So. <laughs> And I think they were even called that because oh. I think they might have been GCEs or something. Well, I know I didn't get all levels. Well, it's funny. Like, uh, what school did you go to? Brother? Thomas Aquinas. Right. Well, yeah, we were local rivals. We used to play right. in North Hilton Road, and the ball used to sometimes get kicked over the fence, and, oh, the, and yeah. the bus might run it out. Oh, yeah. So I had all that. But anyway, you're just going back a little bit. You're talking about your skills. When I was like 14, um, you had to make a decision who you were going to play football for. So uh, it was Sunderland, or it was Burnley, and. Um, like, me, me parents thought, like, it'd be better moving away because they thought there was a lot of bad lads around Sunderland that mm. I was knocking about with at the time. And I could sort of understand where they were coming from, but, like, you know, the early days where people are smoking and staying off school and all them things that you do, right? Great crack, were on it at the time. But, so I actually moved my school and at 14 and I went down to live for Burnley for, like, two years. So our first day at school, and I'm sure it's a bit like when you turn up at the army and turn up for different places... We walks into the room, me and this lad from Wales, uh, a really good looking lad, and um, we goes into this school in, in, in Burnley, and there's all different nationalities and bits and pieces of people there, and and um, he's, he's getting into the, all the girls, all the local lasses. So, no, no word of a lie, on our first day at school, we both got filled in, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was now the team of me. <laughs> so, like, I'm just saying, you know, like your school and, and that sort of like the way you brought up and that but like again I don't know what you were like when you were a kid but like I, I wasn't brilliant at school other than no, maths I, was, I wasn't football uh, mine I did the least possible to sort of get in the army that was it right. I, had, I wanted to join the army I didn't I didn't excel I, I wasn't thick but I just I didn't like it Aye. I wanted to get the army and that was it you know I didn't have a plan B Aye. unfortunately Aye. so I've gone back to Burnley uh-huh. so you're 14 you've gone living there and there away from home so mm-hmm. scary Scary, I remember coming into my first night in the digs. It was a building a bit like yours. I was on the fourth floor, and I went into a room, and I was sharing with a, uh, a policeman. Like, I mean, <laughs> hold on a minute. <laughs> fucking hell. Hold, well, hold on a minute. So, like, I mean, just, just try to add that up. Like, I mean, you wouldn't get away with it these days, no. but that, that was me first I'd say that the police do normally get away with shit like that. <laughs> I, um, I still t- I didn't think he spoke to us all night. And he yeah. had, in those days, there was only four channels. And right. he had BBC Two on, and it was not what I liked, so yeah. like, I had no choice. Anyway, that's a long story, and it's not even important. But no, I went down there, and um, you know, I signed for them when I was 16. A couple of ex Sunderland players were down there at the time. Older lads, like people, older lads, Leighton James was a lad that played play for Sunderland. Um, and uh, I always remember, Joe, my first wage packet, right? Because we used to get £16 a week, £2 for a win, a pound for a draw. In those days, I got a lot of flat pay. I didn't get many bonuses for that way, right? <laughs> but I used to have to collect the wages. And I remember, do you remember getting your wages in a perforated envelope, like a little brown perforated right. thing? Leighton James, he, he came out, he had about £600 or something like that. And I had me 14 and you couldn't even, mine was that thick. But that, that's you were dreaming then, you were thinking one day, I might get the... The, that, you know, and the I mean, fat envelope. The fat envelope, you know. And I might be able to move. I tried away. to give him mine <laughs> one day. He, he, he <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> no, I might be able to move out of that room with the police. 
Aye, aye, well, they said about that the better they could. Uh, but no, just like, it's a bit like, you yeah, well, your first job, you know, your first wage packet mm. and, you know, your first time away from home as a kid, really. And it's like, um, but you have to learn to grow up, don't you? Because, like, is anybody going to do it for you? That's it, man. Um, and uh, I heard you talking about things whereby, you know, like, um, the, 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 there's discipline. It's no different in football. At the, at the, at that's in the early days. You know mm. what I mean. The way they play football then, they play football now. Was too. Co- I mean, and then you used to get right stuck into people. Uh, you know, you were getting you, nothing. It was snowballs uh, barge. You know, there's a lot of similarities with football and the military. Like a, a lot. You know, as in it's a short career. Yeah, basically. That's very you true. know. Yep. The, the teamwork, camaraderie, and stuff. When when that's taken away from you, that yep. leads to mental health problems. You know, yeah. I saw yeah. quite a few footballers about it. You know, yeah. And you know, Kevin Balls, I were patron. Yeah, talking about this. Uh, I was talking about this. Yeah, actually, yeah. What, was, yeah. what was he saying? Fucking hell, didn't I get on there? No, no, <laughs> no. On, on, on the contrary, no, no. I mean, just again, I just taught you about the connections. Some of the things you get involved in the club. I mean, me, uh, uh, a friend of mine's actually bought Notts County, the football team. Oh, and right. um, He's looking. I mean, they're in the conference team, but uh, Bowley looks after the young kids and things like that. So, like, I'm going to put them in touch after the transfer window because um, that conference, they don't have a deadline. So if Kevin's got a couple of lads that he wants to get out, because Kevin wants to see the young lads playing football. Aye, you know, he's got a proper passion for it, hasn't he? They've got to be playing, though. They've got to be playing against blokes and men and yeah. getting stuck into it. He, he's not a big fan of the... You know, playing at the under twenty three level because you, you you you're not really learning out. So so we'll put them in touch again. Network in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You help somebody out like that. Who knows? Anyway, next time we're going to do it in Nuts Co- County, Jeremy, you know I mean? you've got two nice tickets. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I hope we're not in that fucking league, mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's no. I don't Let's go so. up instead. Eh? Let's go up instead. Oh, yeah. So, um, did you? Because I, I, I obviously you haven't re- researched anything yeah, no, about your career or anything. Well, you're not going to find much. <laughs> <laughs> so, from Burnley, did you go to another club? No, or? no, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happens. And again, like it, 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 this is where the difference in the army and the football changes. You get the 18-year-old and um, you, you either get signed as a professional or not. And what happened for me was I was playing for Burnley. We were in the, um, the equivalent of the Premiership now, which was then the Division 1. And... Um, and uh, I was due to get my contract, but they got relegated, didn't they, to the championship, and the manager got the sack. And um, I'm going to say this anyway, but we, I, I was pretty sort of nailed on to get like at least a first two-year pro contract at that sort of stage. But the manager, the, the new, a new manager came in, all the backroom staff went, the club's just been relegated, Nobody, they, they don't know who I am, I've only played reserve mm. team football and stuff like that, you know, I'm Billy, like, nobody knows who I am. And um, this this bloke comes in. He says, oh, "I'm sorry, son, but like we're just gonna have to let you go." So it's like basically, as you might put it, f off. Mm. Uh, they didn't even let us pick my boots up. So it was a bit. And at that stage, Jer, like it's and it's no different now, mind. I don't think for young kids and footballers, like it's a very small percentage make it. Um, what you're doing is, I'm don't forget, I've, I've a little bit of profile in the northeast and then the papers and things mm. like that, you know. But like you're coming home at 18. You're being rejected and you haven't got a job. And I'm like thinking, Christ almighty, like I didn't fancy this at all. So like, um, you've got to get a job, haven't you? You know, and, and um, it's it's, an or- it's a horror. But it happens all the time with kids. It, uh-huh. But like the way they handled it was shit, to be honest with you. I was very unhappy with it, uh, the way they do it. Um, but like, I don't know, you, like... You, you, you're going to deal with setbacks, aren't you? You know, right, um, it just makes you a man, really. But I mean, like, I thought, you know, I was getting the £600 pay pack mm. and I couldn't even take a pair of boots home. So, like, it really puts you. Um, I was devastated, like, mm. and uh, well, embarrassed, I think. Well, I asked, uh, I asked Grant Ledbetter, it was in, and I yeah. asked him, and I said, like, do you ever notice that si- similar situation of kids that get rejected? Mm-hmm. And then have you he- ever realised that any of them sort of. Went on to suffer depression, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, uh, suicide, anything like yeah. that, you know. Well, I, I think, like again, in the t- now, uh, just because I know a little bit about this, uh, uh, um, I, I just know that there's a, there's a big backup uh, to it now, and and, and the, the, this council. Them. But I mean, like, they the put them on proper business studies. I mean, like, uh, people have criticised the academy recently about the football results and things like that, and and yes, like you know, it's the 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 they've been poor. But I don't realise the think like there's one of the things and it's st- it stood with me the first time I met him. Paul Reed, who was the academy director there, he says what what they're trying to do is they they try and like make 
good people. Mm. That's what they try to do. And like, and I think that's a really testament. I know you're trying to create footballers and stuff like that. Of course you are. But they're also teaching them all sorts of other skills because the percentage success rate of getting through the first team is very, very small. They've got to give them some sort of backup. So all that educational stuff they do and, you know, some of the things you're doing here. It's like people, like, forget, like, you know, short career. And, you know, I mean, how many young kids are coming through these days? hard. So, like... Um, You've got to be really exceptional. And, uh, of course, another thing, again, where there's a lot of criticism is about some of the players from the academy being sought out. Well, you know, if Liverpool comes knocking on your door and says, do you want to, like, come to Liverpool's academy? Um, or, like, do you want to sign for Liverpool when you're 16 and, um, you know, take your chances there? Well, yes, you're going to be playing with higher quality players. There's still no ch- success uh, sort of guarantee that you're going to be mm. successful, is there? But like, but equally, if you're with Sunderland now and you're sort of 16, um, you, you realistically, unless you're exceptional, you're not going to break into the first team neither because it's a different type of player. So you can understand why some of these kids go. You know what I mean? It's not really about money. Mm. Well, although they do get, you know, in some cases, offered telephone numbers to go mm. down to these clubs. But like, all them big clubs are just buying these lads. It's a bit like it's a bit like a farm, really. They're trying to get like one diamond out of there, yeah. you know, uh, which is a bit sad, really. But like, uh, you know, I'm not going to put anybody off wanting to become a footballer. No, That's what I wanted no. to become, you know, and yeah, uh, right. just, I just wasn't good enough, like so. Um, so I. So yeah. what did you do when when all that happened? Then? Did well, you I'll go through you, a bit of a depression? No, 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 nothing like that at all, really. Um, partly because I'll tell you what I did. Um, my girlfriend at the time was looking, and this, they, they don't even, I don't even think they exist these days, what I'm going to talk about now. Went in the job centre, and in, in those days there used to be a woman's no, section. No, job centres didn't fucking exist now. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a woman's section and a man's section. And my girlfriend's looking for a job, and I'm not, because I'm still getting paid for like the next sort of three months of my contract. I got let go on that, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to look, but I didn't have a clue. And um, you'll remember these, so I, I'm in the woman's section, and there's a <laughs> sign on the wall that says, Ladbrooks, and they were looking for somebody to mark the board. Do you remember we used to put the chalk up on when you go out in the betting shop with all the smoky cigarette? Aye. And I thought, well, I like the bet. Um, and I thought, well, I'll have to have a look at that. Um, and that was, I was 18 when I went in, and I'm 58 this year, and I've never come out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's been a lot of changes, obviously, in my career since then, but, like, like I just, like, I, I love racing, I love sport, I love anything, and um, and I loved working in Sunderland. There used to be a big lab brooks underneath the Croat Leisure Centre. Right, oh, yeah, I remember that. You know, it was massive, and uh, I used to mark the board in there, and then I was playing to my little audience, as yeah. daft as it was. It was, it was packed, oh. but like... So what year would that have been then? Um, well, yeah. where we are now then. Um, um, Christ, I would jump. So, whenever you were born, I'd eat in years, Drew. Um, <laughs> 62, 60, 70, 80. 80. Aye. 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 Uh, so, because you couldn't be 18 and work under that. But, like, again, just talking about, like, a bit like you're in the army, I worked with some good people, people, experienced people, showed you the ropes mm. and what to do and stuff like that. And, like, you know, I still say it today, um, I love my work. Um, cause I love talking to people and meeting customers and things like that. But like, it's, I'm working in sport. I mean, like, what? Well, like, it's f- <laughs> it's great to do some fairly light work. Uh, well, sometimes it does. But oh, like, yeah. but like, equally, the next day I'll go in and like, you know, it's what happened. Liverpool, Newcastle mm. signed. Whatever. There's always something to talk about, isn't there? Mm. You know. Um, so that's what we do. We talk about sport all day. Good. Good. Hard well, I mean, the, y- you've sort of jumped a massive. Uh, 30 year career there though haven't you yeah so you went in you marked boards and now, yeah, well now I, you're a director well yeah, uh, so, so yeah. I'm assuming something happened in between so well, yeah I had, uh, went off to uh, I had to move to Gibraltar I spent a lot of time working in the North East everywhere Prudhoe Gateshead anywhere in the North East I've been right you know or, or like because we used to have a lot of betting shops in those sort of days and that you know um, did all of that and then I moved into the, the sort of the digital side of things I moved to Gibraltar with my family um, what was that like? Um, I've never been at Gibraltar. Well, a lot of your lads over there because oh, yeah, yeah. they used to fight every time. Mm. Every time, they used to squatty <laughs> fight all the time. Oh, it was just amazing. <laughs> but like again, like I loved it, right? Because it's a tiny island, um, twenty-seven thousand people, I think. Yeah, twenty-seven thousand people. You could run around the whole island in forty-five minutes. I only had my jacket on once in a year, 
because the, the weather's so nice. Oh. Yes, you've got a few monkeys popping in your house every now and again from the mountains and things like that. But I absolutely loved it because the, the, the lifestyle, and like I said, um, you'd, you'd come out to work there, the sun's shining, you'd have a beer. It was just fantastic, you know. I mean, um, I took 30 staff over uh, with us to wear, uh, like, on a secondment for three months. I couldn't get them to go home, <laughs> you know. So, like, um, oh, it was just, it was a great time. But again, at the time, Joe, it's like, it, like, but like yourself, um, and your, your, your work's not, in some cases, not going to come to you, you know. Um, you've got to go to it. And I had to move away from home to get into my career. I'm still mm. travelling to, to Dublin to this day um, because that's where my work is. But um, it's sport like so what's not the like? So, so what exactly do you do now? That's a really good question. Uh, cause like, I mean, I don't want you to... It's what my staff d- ask us. I was going to say, your staff and your boss, so, I don't want them to be thinking, what so, do you so, do? So what do I do? Um, it's, uh, well, I mean, effectively, uh, I deal with some of the biggest customers in the world right. uh, and the, the good thing about our business is is um because gambling gets a bit of a like a, a bad rep but like you know I'm, I'm talking about people that just like to have a bit and you know watch the racing on the telly put a yankee on mm. and that sort of stuff it's all done in moderation you know like like people i i, I just wanted to raise this because like we, we get a little bit of stick today but like it's a bit like having a drink it's a bit like having a um um a, a drink having a bet having a smoke People's entitled to do what they want as long as they do it mm. in moderation. And from our side of it, um, it's about how responsible we, we, we are with that, which I'll, I'll talk to you about a little bit later on. But, like, uh, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> what you do? Oh, what work. do I do? Yeah, what do I, what, 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 like some of those, uh, all, uh, uh, there's not much I wouldn't touch. So, I We're mean. We're not going back to that policeman, are we? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, one of the things, uh, no, well, I mean, like, f- for example, um, I'm responsible for the biggest, I'm, I'm responsible for bringing the money in. Right, I, I, that's my job. I, I'm responsible for the revenue of that business, but there's lots of different elements to that. There's the marketing element. There's doing the deal with Sundon for mm. the shirt, for example, and getting that brand awareness and getting yourself out there. Uh, like I said, there's dealing with big customers. They're all in different parts of the world, but the businesses as well. I mean, I deal with every one of the top bookmakers in the country. I've got 400 bookmakers that I deal with uh, on the race tracks. That people, you know, the lads that you see up there, and they've got the bets and the tick tick and all that. Eye. All them lads. So I know all of them. So they're, so they're all my customers because we provide some sort of service to them. Right. So it's no different, really, to the the 200 people you've got coming in here, right? If I said, well, what do you do with them? Well, you do all sorts of different things, but ultimately, you provide a service, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what I do. I provide a service to them, which generates revenue for the business. It's a very, very important part of the business that we do. But we're no different to you. We've got to promote ourselves into different countries and um, social media, Facebook, these sort of things, the Sundance shirt deal, the Charlton mm. shirt deal. You know, you know, I'll not be... Let's. It was the easiest deal in the world to do mm. a shirt deal with uh, Sundance. took us about seven minutes <laughs> in the Hilton Hotel. I was... Whatever they'd said, I was going to do it anyway. Uh. So it wasn't like it was that easy. But... There's a bit of business there because I'm thinking to myself, right, we did a three-year deal with them. Three-year deal, you're thinking, right, okay, they don't get up the first season. I mean, funny enough, a lot of people think we're not sponsoring them now. Well, we are. Uh-huh. But um, we've taken like a, a moral decision. Yeah, we, we, we stopped. We would be more responsible for the gambling thing. So we're, Was that we're, like, did, did every uh, betting firm have to do that in this no, league? No, 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 no. See, see just... just I'm not boring you. No, of course not. Man. My my company I work for is GVC. We're 23 different brands, which will be more familiar to some of the listeners. Ladbrokes, Coral, Sporting Bet. These are, we all come under the same umbrella. Mm-hmm. And and effectively, we have a, we as a group, GVC, have decided that we're going to not promote our uh, products in football. Okay, because there's too much of it on. I think everybody can you know you switch it on. It's all. Ray Winston and you know have a bet and all yeah. and it's too much in our review so we've pulled back so we kept the deal with Sunderland we, we've honoured our contract with them to pay them the money for this season but um, we've donated the shirts to um, children with cancer right um, and so like I'm, I'm quite proud of that as well mm-hmm. because like it's it's for a very very it's for a very very good course 
you should have rang us just before we made that decision. That I should have. Completely should have different did. thing. Should have. But um, that's I was going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. Why did I not ring you? Yeah, no, I'm thinking about that now as I'm answering <laughs> the question. But like, so, so that's another angle: the market and the, the doing the deal. But like, I'm having a bit of a bet, aren't I? Because if Sunderland go up into the championship, I'm thinking, well, we get more exposure on mm-hmm. the television. Sky love Sunderland because there's always going to be thirty thousand plus yeah. there in the in the uh, championship. There'll be thirty five. 40,000 there, you know what I mean? And we get a winning team there. But, like, so, like, what do I do? Um, it's what it's probably a question of what do you not do? Exactly. Well, you know, I think if you've sort of uh, covered exactly what you do, yeah. really. So, going back to the shirt deal that like you're yeah, going to yeah. give us. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> no, that would have been brilliant. I mean, God. I, Pro- the, proudest moment of my life. Well, for me, all of everything that I've done, mm-hmm. right, all this, building this, everything... And people will think I'm stupid, but the proudest bit of me uh, for my life in work-wise is when they put the Veterans in Crisis thing on the big screen when we walked around the pitch. Uh, yeah. And that, and I'm not joking you, that no, is, it's, that, a- it's happened twice, mm-hmm. and that has been the proudest part of my mm-hmm. whole thing. Helping people, uh, and I mean, I've, I've helped people from from committing suicide, so really, I'm, it's bit, really, it's, it, no, it's, know, a, it's a like, big thing, but it's nice recognition, me personally, isn't it? it's like, I know. you know, because I've, Season ticket since I was fifteen, mm-hmm. matches all over the world, you know, and th- that was just it was amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I, and I've, there was like a thing like um, on Twitter, you did like seven pictures of your life or something. Like yes, that. and I did that on the seventh day because uh-huh. that was my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. I've got that on me for I, I, yeah, you know, it's an amazing experience. I like. think you should be rightly proud and like, um, but like, I'm no different to you in that respect and like. To me, like you're talking about Sunderland, so the first game of the season, like we have a sponsor, it's Sunderland versus Charlton, it's live on Sky, and they've all got my shirt name on the shirt, Aye. and like you're thinking, well, how lucky is that? But like, and then we score, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Lynn Gooch scores that header in the last minute. Mm. Like, nobody will ever forget that. Like, so a bit like yourself, it's little things like that where you're able to put your work, it gets a little bit of recognition for what it's at and stuff like that and then it moves on and goes into the charitable things. Mm. So it's very similar what we do, it's just that we do it a diff- we do it di- we, yeah, we, we've got a wider a wider group of people because you cannot sort of, um, in, in a group like ours, you cannot have it in one area, it's impossible yeah. really because you get too many people and so we try and share it out, right. have an adopted charity for the year which this year happens to be the children uh, in cancer, and and, uh, and that's how they play it and that, you know. But I mean, you know, so I'm like, I mean, I, I, if it if I'm, sounds a bit selfish, I don't mean to say it, but like, I would have loved to have gotten it, uh, like, to be an exclusive Sunderland thing and yeah. that, you know. But like, uh, it wasn't to be, uh, but it's went to a great cause, you know. Yeah, I thought it's a brilliant cause, it is, mate. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, you could, uh, I noticed when I was at the match the other day, there's a, a, a massive white patch with nothing wrote on you could get some Vicks put, put on there in the, in oh, the stadium because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting yeah. opposite and I was thinking you know that oh, you, well, could see, put, you could put something there I met you about seven or eight months ago and every time I speak to you you've got like this marketing head on like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm always the same I'm think always <laughs> thinking ahead I'm uh, always thinking I'd, uh, I want this to be well next what, time you're going in with a tin of paint and a brush well what I, honestly I want I want this service I want people around the country to think we should have that in, in our city. Mm. I want people to always think of Sunderland as like the, uh, uh, where they started and how the great this, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. I'd really, really do, so the more exposure I get for that, the better, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So well, I've get, seen, it on, get it on the thing. I've seen your trophy cabinet downstairs. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. you know? I know, and that's great, you know? And uh, I mean, to be honest, the, I put every time I win anything, it's a team effort, but it's also for everyone in Sunderland because if mm-hmm. it wasn't for the people in Sunderland, Getting behind us, none of this would work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. really, it's a Sunderland thing. So well, I just think like uh, again, patronising you, but like I think you're at the very, very beginning. Even though you have been gone for such yeah. a long time, because um, the positive thing is about it's it's a subject that a lot of people will talk about, um, and um, there's no danger that somebody's gonna copy your model mm. uh, or come into the transfer market for you well this is it uh, I mean the transfer window's got like a, another day left so uh, you maybe we'll, maybe we'll keep moving. you uh, yeah, I'll not be moving now uh, mate. I'll not uh, be moving now, uh. now uh. so um, obviously you love your job mm-hmm. we'll move on to uh, um, how you've come about to be a uh, non-executive director of Sunderland, Sunderland. Right. yeah well because um, that must be a dream as well it is it's great and um, like I think 
I think it's important because some people get a bit confused, like what like what your role is. So, mm. a non exec's role is not to get involved in the day to day business. It's more to talk a little bit about the strategic sort of side of things going forward. And um, I would have, I've been talking to uh, Charlie and Stuart um, start of the season really, and I'd said to them, look. You know, if there was ever an opportunity to get involved, I'd, l- I'd love to get involved in some sort of capacity. And um, so we talked about that, and that was always going to be the plan. And uh, they were looking to bring four people on, uh, myself, Dave Jones, and another couple of lads. Um, and that was like, uh, but we didn't really get round to it, because uh, everybody's busy. Like, uh, we didn't really get round to it, the football season starts. And we didn't really get round to talking about it properly till, uh, it must have been about late September, October, early October, and then it went pretty fast from there. But like like I said, your role is more in the future. So my remit, uh, from my point of view, was very, very simple. Like, I'm from here. I really care about the club. Um, I, I want to make sure that it's, it's everything's done right for the club. You know what I mean? And uh, for the future of the club and that. Because you've seen like teams go out of business and all sorts of things. This and that, is, you know? It's so easy. It happens, doesn't it? Um, and I'm sure there's going to be some more. So like... So that what I was looking to really do is get a bit involved with with uh, Stuart and Charlie, and uh, but then you know, like I don't think Stuart's made it a secret, certainly not recently, that he wants to sort of like um, sort of sell the club for what want of a better word, or get future investment. So, so what the future holds, I don't really know, but I think we'll certainly have some sort of input into like you know where the club goes and. Um, that's quite a little, res- you know. It's a little. Res- it's up to Stuart what he does at the end of the day. But I, I don't care. What, like in many respects, what Stuart thinks, I'll be giving him my opinion as me, as a Sunderland fan, as what I think. And and Dave Jones will be exactly the same because, you know, I know I've known Dave for a lot of years. Certainly not shy in coming forward with like an opinion on and anything about football. But the one thing I'd like to think um, is that. It helps being from here because, like, I mean, I, I, you, you, when you live up here, you know what people's going to say before they say it, don't you? Mm, of course. And I, th- and I think that's quite an important thing. And, um, and like, you know, Stuart and uh, Charlie, the, the, the very busy people in their own lives. I mean, just my remit or my reach out to son was, look, everybody's busy. It's no different as somebody knocking on your door and says, here, is anything I can give you a hand with? And what you're going to say if somebody comes and does that to you, mm. and somebody that you entrust, uh, somebody you've done some business with, why wouldn't you? Who was going to turn that down? And and like, and then when we we got involved, I mean, yes, fantastic. Like, you know, I couldn't play for them, mm. but to have some involvement, it doesn't matter if it's tiny percentage. Mm. It doesn't matter, does it? Um, I'm very proud of it. Oh, like, you know, right, um, so mate, I was, I, 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 I texted you straight away when I come out. <laughs> Did I? I was absolutely over the moon for yeah. you because I know I knew what it, it would feel like for you. Yeah, you know, because I, I, being in my position, it's like I, that's you know, it's I'll like seeing your sign up on the stadium of light. Thing. Aye, it's like, oh great, this is like you know, but um, I can't believe how much go. It's 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 a strange business, like you know. All this rumours and things that you hear about and stuff like that and transfer windows and everybody thinks it's easy to sign players. Mm. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it, but you've got absolutely no idea what people do, want and insist on. and It's, it's, it's a nightmare. Neither mm. one of people didn't sign people. It's very, very difficult, you know. Um, but like I said, um, you know, and again, just going back to the team, you know, um, might as well get this in there now because... Since me and Dave Jones signed, some of them haven't been beat. No, well, so maybe look, look, must got mate. <laughs> so must we must be, we must be bringing them some luck. I might have jinxed it there because we've got a hard game at the weekend. But like we're gonna get beat sometime. It's about how we react. But like just back to the team, right? Mm. Back to the team now. It's everybody's because we win a few games. Everything's a lot nicer, you know. And I just go back to that bullying thing, you know. That's the bit I don't like about social media because, like I said, you, you've got me and you talk lots about football last season would say oh he was good he was shit I'm no different to you in them sort of opinions right but like when you're constantly harassing people you know and uh, that's when I get a little bit annoyed about it if I'm honest with you and I have to bite my tongue a little bit and be professional about it but like it's just like um, all the lads the son and lads and you've met some of these people they've all got families and things like that to go home to just like we have and 
the very thing that we're talking about here, I just think that's the bit I don't like about Twitter because if they don't do something about it, you got it's gonna it's gonna send some people depressed, some of that mm. sort of that bullying. And um, I don't know what the answer is, but uh, people's more, pre- more more happy these days to type something really really offensive than say it to your face. Mm. You know. Well, you'll find most people who type them things don't see it in people's faces. Exactly, you know, exactly. Know. So, like, um, I know we're getting a little bit off subject there, but like, it's it's like it's a bit like what you do here. You help deal with people that's got problems. I'm just saying to you, just just sometimes when you're going to say something like, you know, about Sunderland Football Club, just think to yourself, who will see that message, right? And like, you know, pers- prospective new owners are seeing things like that. Like, it, it doesn't look good, does it? No. no you know, doesn't. like, what's what's the sorry, what's the upside? Is me qu- is is how I would actually put it. But I mean, um, again, I'm not saying you can't have an opinion, right? We've all got them. But like, it's how you actually put your case across. And like, uh, and I c- I'm absolutely delighted that uh, the manager's turned it round mm. um, because um, he, uh, he's, had, he's, had a f- he's had a lot of issues to deal with. Again, I'm not going to get into them, but like, some of them's in the public domain, some of them's not. And um, there's absolutely no danger that team are. A, Hell of a lot fitter than they were, a lot hungrier, and a lot more together. And he deserves an awful lot of credit for that. And equally, it was Stuart Donald that put him in. Mm. He, you know what I'm saying? So, like, mm. anyway, let's see where the season brings us because, like, we're, we're, it's always a roller coaster for us. Fucking isn't it just, man? It is, and uh, it's very stressful. Uh, but, like, it was very stressful before you get involved. Mm. So now. It's the same stress with ten percent more on. You know <laughs> ten percent more. There's your betting thing come straight in. There. <laughs> exactly. Aye. So was... yeah, go on back. Uh, how we first got met and sort yep. of things. So one of the things that you did, f- the first thing you did, sorry, was um, you did a penalty shootout Aye. down um, Charlton, Aye. and it sort of like mirrored the penalty shootout yeah. in the yeah. thing. And I mean, I think off the top of my head, I mean, that was about two and a half grand you, you made for us then. Well, it was, it was such an easy thing to do. And like, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to do it at the Stadium of Light. But we'd already played and uh, done all that sort of stuff. So the next best option was Charlton. So Every, was it your idea? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Was it? Well, uh, well, yeah, I, I th- to be honest, I mean, I, uh, I'm not just saying it because you're there. I'm entitled to one, Gooden. I, thought, I, I honestly <laughs> thought it would have been your uh, idea. But I mean, look, it, it was easy though. It was made sense, didn't it? I mean, everybody in Fortune remembers Mickey Gray's miss. Mm-hmm. We all remember coming home, pissed off. That mm. journey was horrible. Um, but like, I thought, like, I mean, you know, like, we've got a lot of history with Charlton, Clive Mendonca, Sunderland lad. You know, all these things are all ch- so like it's very easy. And I was sponsoring both teams. And I said, like, and they thought it was a fantastic idea. So five lads from Sunderland, five lads from Charlton taking penalties. By the way, the pen- the Charlton penalty takers were crap, right? But once a Tory took one from us. Uh, Marty off the Lake Ports, you know, like we wanted to give it a bit mm. more profile and stuff like that. And I'll tell you what he did after this game, right? You're talking about like just good days, right? Uh, the, the actual final result was 1 1, so it was a, a draw, which is always helpful in the, them situations. But um, after the game, the the penalty takers got them all together, you know, they kept the strips and all that. And then Marty sang that song, um, you know, like the, the Lake Ports mm. song. Um, and it was absolutely. Fantastic! He just sitting in a, in, a, in a quiet room, full of Sunderland fans, full of Charlton fans, full of people, and you know what? Like little things like that, you like that. That means a lot to me, like because it's like that's what I like to do. Like I just like to be with people talking about sport. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm glad I didn't tap penalty, like because I would have been crap myself. But like. <laughs> You know, uh, uh-huh. and I'm glad you weren't playing because yeah, where I, you I, played I, a role part at the stadium. I, 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 I would have oh. fucking missed me. My boo would have come off again. Aye. Aye. Um, and so then, then you um, you've invited us into your box. Yeah, yeah. Been, been in the box a couple of times, mm-hmm. which I really appreciated. Mm-hmm. Really good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you did a Nile Quinn talking at the stadium yeah. the day before we went to Wembley, which yeah. I was thinking, oh my god, you know what I mean? So I didn't drink. Because I knew I was getting the train. I think I got the train about eight o'clock in the morning, uh-huh. seven eight o'clock in the morning. Well, we've been trying to do that for a long time, and like getting Nile, he's so he's so busy, like you know. Um, and um, Alex Ray came down, yeah. and Tony Cascarino, and it was like, uh, and like it was again, it was an easy thing. At the time, Sun and were flying, but it was trying to find a time to do it. Anyway, as it happens, we qualify for the cup, and I thought, right, I'm going, I'm going to have to get this done before, because if we lose, like. Mm. 
So we thought, right, well, let's we'll have a Niall Quinn's disco pants. Let's get the party started at the Stadium of Light on a, on a Friday. And um, the tickets went just like that. And I was thinking, oh, people would be travelling down and stuff yeah. like that. But, like, Brian King, all these sort of lads that got involved, uh, John, took tables and had a really fantastic night. It was a great night. But, I mean, night, like, I you know, I'm it. just like I say, but what we'll, if you think about what the components were, right, it's not complicated, really. Think about it. We're in the stadium of light, right? We love that, right? We're with Sunderland fans and people and our mates that we like, right? We're going to Wembley at the weekend and we've got some of our idols talking about tales in the past, like at Sunderland and like Quinny and, um, you know, and I, I mean, like, it doesn't get much better than that. Mm. And do you know what? And then at the end of it, we got something like, I, don't know, I, I can't remember, Joe, it was six grand or six Six nine. grand, because I grand. looked at, you give us a big check, didn't you? So, like... Which I couldn't cash, by the way, because it was about this big. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, was, it was a dodgy signature. <laughs> no, like, but no, like, you know, and like all them people dug in. And again, I think you should just like, like there's a lot of, like I say, I've met an awful lot of people, nice people, some of people, some very wealthy people as well. But like, I've also, it doesn't, that, I'm not just putting that into the thing, but I'm just saying there was one lad that night, he paid... Seven hundred pounds for a couple of tickets to go into the boardroom, and I spoke to that lad early today, and I've been a friend of his um, ever since. They call him Tim. He's a really, really nice fella. Sunderland fan, works all over the world, but wanted to be it that night. Wanted to contribute to that, and I like, and I think that's fantastic. Mm. You know, it, um, and he gets a lot of like satisfaction. I, I think what you guys do, for me anyway. Um, it makes it. It's like you. W- there's no point in doing things like that if there's no beneficiary. Mm. And then if the beneficiary is your next door neighbour, like well, that's just awesome, man. Oh. You know what I mean? It's the, 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 it's, it's simple as that. There's no well, other way. When to I say. started this, that th- that was me sort of reasoning, and, and I was thinking, well, to me, I, if the money's kept in Sunderland, mm. people in Sunderland it would be that because I worked for a charity. Which was Gateshead based, mm-hmm. in but they worked in Sunderland, mm-hmm. and the money would come in meant for Sunderland, and it would leave Sunderland, oh. and, and it, that really pissed me off because mm-hmm. I, I think I was maybe ten percent of the workforce were from Sunderland, mm-hmm. you know, and the others were Jordies, and it really fucking pissed us off to be mm-hmm. honest. That's why one of the reasons I left, one of the many reasons I left, like, mm-hmm. but uh, I and I, I thought, well, I'm the same. If I, I if somebody in Sunderland wants something, I would give them it. If I've got it. You know, I would give them it. Mm-hmm. You know, and the people are like that, mm-hmm. and I think it's a great model. Like. But again, like you know, you talk about that, and there's, there's little things that get mi- missed. I mean, again, gone up that cup final. I remember uh, being in the ticket office queuing because I pay for my tickets like mm. everybody else. In case everybody thinks you get freebies, no, no, I pay up. Like mm. that's the way I do it. I always have done right. And um, it's need what of a lie. There's a lad in front of me, and he's at the the, the desk getting his ticket for the cup final, and. Um, I could see he was like a little bit embarrassed and like, and, and this fella, like right in front of me, went up this kid, son of a fella, he says, tomorrow, mate. He says, oh, I'm, I'm short a couple of quid. And the fella just pushed straight out of his pocket, give him a fiver, sort it out. And I thought like, you know, in some parts of the country, people didn't even talk to each other. Exactly. Right. But I just like, again, that was another Sunderland thing for mm. me. Like you'll help somebody out and stuff like that. Um, I thought it was brilliant. Like little... There's a, they're all Sunderland football club sort of. They must be sick of me when I got to Dublin, like because you know, <laughs> it's like. Um, but I think like again, you know, there's, there's always been a good connection with Ireland and Sunderland, from um, Roy Keane coming over mm. and all them sort of lads and Charlie Chalk owning the club and that. All these people have like been fortunate enough to meet and all that. But like, I've got great memories of Sunderland. You know, I mean, talking to Roy. Keen was about 18 months ago now, and he I says, like, Roy, I says, Sunderland, he says, you know, he said, f- too, he said, great times. Great times. It was for us as he well. He repeated what he said. No, no, I'm not just saying, he said, great times. Yeah. Great times. Because he doesn't say much, Roy, like, mm. uh, and um, he loved it. He loved it here, but, like, at the time, he felt there were non-football people upstairs. Mm. Ellis was in America and stuff like that, mm. the rest of its history, you know, how they get on and all that, and, and I mean, Roy, like, you know, he can upset... Could have said two yeah. people in the same room if he was only one in, couldn't he? You know what I mean? So like, uh, I, I love watching him when he's uh, talking. Now he's commentating uh, when they get in the uh, studio and that. Uh, he just class. comes out. He, you can see other people just looking, thinking like, that's somebody's just said that." Uh, like. I'd love to get him in here. I'm like, fucking <laughs> right, I would. I'm fucking uh, right, I would, man. Uh, I've, him and me, Joe asked us before who, and uh, 
Mickey Flanagan, you know, the comedian. Oh, yes, sir. That's, that's who I would really like to hear. Oh, Joe or Mickey Flanagan? <laughs> <laughs> Sound the same. They're both from Essex, aren't they? Aye. 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 Mickey Flanagan. Except one of them's funny. <laughs> Aye. Aye, Mickey Flanagan's all right <laughs> as well. <laughs> Aye, so uh, that, too, uh, that, that would be my ideal guest. Like. Aye. Aye. Uh, I mean, I'm happy. Just people normal people, aren't they? Aye. Like, but Aye. like, love where they come from. Yep. Yeah. And that's what, I, that's what I like about people. Like. Aye. So have you went through your list? My list. Uh, uh, sorry. You're, that, you're the first person to bring a list. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I've, I've noticed there's just tin tomatoes, toilet roll. No, you, you, get, <laughs> I, uh, you get a bit. No, I, I, listen, I'm not necessarily a great at speaking and stuff like that. It's not my skill. Like, oh, I don't know. You've done it all right, didn't uh, it? But, but no, no, I think the only thing, like um, like I've just said there, we've gone through quite a few things. The thing, like, uh, for me is uh, it's like I'm, I've always been one of these people, like, you know, you've got to, like, look forward. It's not good, like, fretting too mm-hmm. much about it and stuff like that. And a bit like yourself, just surround yourself by positive people. So, like, I'm talking about the club now. So, yes, we've got, like, a, an important couple of months coming up. Um, the Netflix thing's coming out in about... And then it, just before the end of... Uh, just end, early part of April, I understand. That's, uh, that's where I think. It's going to put us on the map again, profile... I just like I just want to sort of like say to people like you know, just like get behind them. Do you know what I mean? And like like it's it's massive. I mean like tran me last night, you know, and like um what a play the we've been playing on Roca Beach, it was awful, the beach yeah. was absolute but like they've got a spirit there and um I didn't think anybody can compete with us when we're all together. And I understand like I said, I'm I totally understand people getting frustrated about Phil's Parkinson's early days and things like that. But there's a lot of things, like, in the background that people just don't associate, like, I would have no idea about, you know. And um, and like I said, I think the proof of the pudding now is, is they're all fit, everybody's happy, there's no sort of um, protests and things like that. Uh, but I th- like I say, it's, I hope that doesn't sound like I'm having a criticism, Joe. No, of course. I'm just, saying, it, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you can be pissed off about something but like um, you've got to be, just did not take it too far mm. because there's people with families and kids and uh, some of the things I've heard that's gone on like I wouldn't want them to happen to my family so like uh, I just I just say with well, that get behind Sunderland because and like because we're a massive strength as, as, as like a, you know as a unit mm. a bit like the army right we are. We are. all together and um, and people shit themselves coming up here Mm. You know, and uh, that's but like that's the way I am at work. So positive people didn't do negative people. Joe didn't like them. It's, 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 oh, you only need one. Uh, it ruins everything. Need well, uh, like one uh, doom and groomer and ruins everything. Uh, like um, like I say, I like to work with positive people. You like to you know, I don't have to necessarily go for a pint with them at the mm. end of the day and stuff like that. But I didn't do with that, and uh, it held us in good stead. And like just a, like a last little, this is northeast question, but like it's just like you know like where you learn your like your skills and things like that, right? When I started working the betting shops, um, there were all ladies that were worked in the shops, but these were tough ladies. And I'll never forget, I was twenty one year old. I'm a manager, like, um, and I'm managing the Sunderland Leisure Centre. It's the biggest shop in the country in terms of business and customers and things like that. The busiest now, twenty one, like. And um, I went in like a uh, cocky, oh, you know, do this, do this. And I remember all the lasses uh, behind the thing uh, at the end of like the first week. They said, are you finished? Are you? I said, I said, well, tomorrow, like. They said, um, well, um, have you got anything else? I said, no, no. I said, I thought, like, what's going on here? And they said, right, can you leave the room? And I said, well, what's going on here? They said, right, well, we're going to have a meeting now to decide if we're going to do what you've told us. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm still friends with them last to this oh, day. Because, like, just one of, we're one of them. And, like, the, the people can see spoofers. I can. Mm. And, and smell them. And, um, anyway, I, like, sorry, I know I've gone on a little bit there. No, but, like, it's, um, fine, fine. it's just, I'm like you. I care for here um, a lot. Um, and I'll do anything I can to put, get something, like, an inch further forward and stuff like that. Mm. And I think, um, beautiful, look at that coastline, man. You know what I mean? The, the, the whole city's great, man. I, I, talk to I, people. I, I love everything about it. I, right. People think I'm, I'm fucking right because people keep people literally complain about it, right? And I've been all over the country, all over the world, uh-huh. and I, I just love it. I, right. You know, I, I like the people. I, I can walk around, and mm-hmm. 
you know, it, it, it mightn't be the most prosperous place, but to me, it, it, that's what I like, you know. Mm-hmm. I like it, everything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you brought some presents, in Aye. case you forgot. Aye, yeah. Down the side. Oh, are they? Uh, do you do not I, want to pass do, them do up? Do get me seat and uh, sort of Just get them can to you? Not, yeah, can, can you? you? So, so, sorry. So we've got a flat ball, mm-hmm. which you need to blow up, right? right? I didn't bring the pump. It's signed by all the players. With all the numbers on, so we'll, 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 that'll go to a good cause. Thank you very um, much. And I've got the, the actual a bet deck shirt, right? I'm not advertising, but like, it's all got the signed uh, players on the, the the lads that signed it. Um, I'm sure that'll go to a good home. You maybe make a well, few quid out of that. I, I think what I'll actually do is get a frame and put it in my office. Right, that's what I'm going to do. That'll be great. And last thing which I haven't sort of said to you is like, between now and the end of the season, I want to get some of the lads from here. Um, we've got some really, really nice uh, facilities. I'm banging on your table. I'm sorry. I've got four. <laughs> I've went an hour without banging your table. Sorry. Um, we've got um, we've got some nice tickets at the stadium, um, and we'll get some of the lads along Brilliant. for one of the games. Um, and I, I can't, we'll have a few beers in the bar and stuff like that. Be great, you know. Thank you so much for coming in, mate. Yeah, you're welcome. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate everything you've done mm. since I've, since I've ever met you, and I'll really appreciate it when you put my logo on one of them whiteboards that's left. Well, all I can <laughs> say was the easiest thing I've ever <laughs> done in my life. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thank you.